வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு தமிழைஸ் லேர்ன் த தமிழ் லாங்குவேஜ் இன் திஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் செஷன் வி வில் ஹேவ் அ இன்ட்ரோடக்ஷன் டு த தமிழ் லெட்டர்ஸ் லெட்டர்ஸ் இன் தமிழ் ஆர் கால்டு எழுத்து ஸோ த வேர்டு எழுத்து போத் ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு த சிம்பிள் த ரிட்டன் ஃபார்ம் ஆஸ் வெல் அஸ் த சவுண்ட் இந்த அசோசியேட்டட் வித் ஈச் அதர் In Tamil, basically, there are 30 letters, 30 எழுத்து முப்பது எழுத்துக்கள் வி கால் கிளாசிஃபை தெம் ஆஸ் உயிர் அண்ட் மெய் ஸோ த வவுல்ஸ் ஆர் கால்டு உயிர் எழுத்து த கான்சனன்ஸ் ஆர் கால்டு மெய் எழுத்து தமிழ் இஸ் வாட் வி கால் அண்ட் ஆல்ஃபா சிலபரி அண்ட் அபுஜிடா லாங்குவேஜ் வேர் இன் என் வவுல் கம்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் அ கான்சனன்ட் தேல் பி கிளஸ்டர்ட் தேல் பி கம்பைண்ட் இன் டு அ சிங்கிள் சிம்பிள் ஸோ வி கால் தெம் அஸ் வவுல் கான்சனன்ட் combinations or weir mei edut so 12 vowels together with 18 consonants 12 into 18 will be 216 so there are 216 weir mei edut so don't be baffled by that number it's easy to understand and grasp them the vowels will be added to the consonant form in the form of a marker we'll discuss that later and there is one special letter called as the aidam this is neither a vowel nor a consonant a vowel should have certain characteristic a, a consonant should have some other characteristics but aidam lies in between them so it's classified as a separate in tamil we call tani nilai separate letter or in between vowel and consonant letter now the naming is very beautiful here the term for vowel uir is literally means life or soul you can say which basically gives the idea that these vowels are capable of operating by themselves and they also are the ones which operate the consonants the consonants on the other hand are named mei which literally means body so a body cannot operate by itself whereas a soul can if you believe soul ghost are real then soul uh, life can and the life also can operate the body so our body needs life to be operational same with consonants the idea here is you cannot pronounce a pure consonant even if you try you need a vowel before or after that this is true for any language for any person so in tamil the first consonant is kh so either we say kh if you notice uh, after the kh sound i have to make the a uh, the vowel sound or i can add the vowel before that i can say ik so typically when people say uh, people think they are pronouncing the pure consonant they will just typically say uh, ik in the ich like that but they are adding a vowel before that so consonants need a vowel so beautifully the vowels are named uir life the consonants are named the body mei so we will talk about them we will learn them vowels in the next lesson and the consonants in the third lesson and uh, the vowel consonants combination in the fourth lesson and so on and so forth we will discuss further now the vowels uir eluthu they are further classified into kuril and nedil kuril means short nedil means long now the short long basically refers to the time length time duration for which these words should be typically pronounced now there is a time unit followed in tamil grammar called maathirai so this is a unit of time which is roughly about 1/10 of a second tamil grammars define this maathirai time length as uh, the time taken for one snap of the finger or the time taken for one blink of an eye kan imai kai nodi avve maathirai so one blink of an eye or one snap of the finger which is typically 0.1 second you can take that you don't have to be very exact in this time unit you can speak tamil in your own pace fast or slow whatever it is. but whatever you speak you should be able to differentiate the kuril and nedil short long so whatever is your natural time length for a the kuril sound should be doubled for a so that difference should be maintained a a we'll we'll talk about that so this is very important because they will change the meaning of the words so that difference as long as you maintain that difference as long as you are able to grasp that difference uh, exact time length doesn't matter so there are five short vowels kuril we call them kuril uir short vowels and there are seven long vowels so total 12 vowels in tamil let me show you those vowels here a a e e u u e e i o oh how now as you have noticed i pronounced uh, one long vowel after a short vowel so a uh, a uh, so the short and its long counterpart but of course there are two vowels long vowels which don't have a short counterpart i and au for them if you notice the e 
sound and u sound is the ending so i so e au there's a u sound so in grammar wherever you need a short counterpart for these two we will take e and u so e for the i u for the au long vowel so five short vowels and uh, seven long vowels we will again discuss them in detail expose them learn them in the second lesson don't worry about that right now and may eluthu consonants again consonants are classified into three groups so they are called inam in tamil they are called vallinam mellinam and idainam vallinam literally means hard mellinam means soft idai means in between idainam is in between hard and soft so these consonants are classified as hard and soft based on the place where they are articulated so when you say that letter where the articulation happens so whether it's in the chest or the vocal tract they are called the hard consonants in the modern linguistics they are called the stops or plosives glutterals the soft ones are the nasal nasalized consonants or nasal consonants which where for them the articulation happens in the nasal cavity in tamil grammar they say the nose or the head which is basically the nasal cavity the articulation happens but uh, the pronunciation is the same see this is a beauty so whether you say ka or nya the articulation the functioning of your tongue teeth palate everything is going to be similar but uh, where the articulation happens whether it's whether the air is vibrating in your vocal tract or in your nasal cavity you produce the hard consonant or the soft consonant so basically the tamil grammarians have clustered these hard and soft consonants as groups so ka nya they are counterparts cha nya tha na tha na pha ma ra na so they are all counterparts to each other and these aspects are reflected in the tamil grammar we'll come to them later and right now in the beginning i'm not going to go into the depth of these nuances don't bother about them but i will wherever necessary i will mention them in later classes uh, after we have adequately exposed ourselves learned ourselves these letters their sounds everything we'll discuss these nuances stuff about the tamil grammar and its beautiful scientific nature and then there is this uh, idainam in between so they are not hard not soft they are in between and some of them the first four of them are also called as semi vowels here love so they are there in many other languages also they are called as semi vowels because like a bubble you can add these next two consonants and they are there be they are capable of being extended e sound so e you can extend il you can extend so they are also called semi vowels and there are two special letters added here el and il uh, special to tamil actually and uh, we have now so three types of il l r l people often get baffled by this and we also have three n in sounds so the n n and n three na sounds are there uh, let me tell you something even many of the native tamils don't bother about the differences in them the nuances in them they they are not capable of pronouncing them correctly so don't bother too much in the beginning right you should of course try to perfect your pronunciation later on but in the beginning don't be baffled by them but uh, they being different letters different phonemes in tamil they do cause a difference in the meaning of a word so if in one word if you are replacing the na with the, the na right uh, that will create difference in the meanings so you should be able to tell them apart but uh, again exposure practice will make it easy for you don't worry don't be baffled by that let me read the consonants so the consonants are arranged in this sequence like the vowels are arranged the short vowel and then the long counterpart a e e like that here the consonants are arranged like uh, the counterparts so we have the hard consonant and then it's a uh, soft con con consonant uh, counterpart like that but uh, that goes up to pa ma and then in between we have the idainam so it's idainam uh, in between so we insert that all the six idainam in between that and the last two ra na comes last again this this is a very uh, scientifically based ordering uh, i don't want to explain that right now and uh, lengthen this video so we'll discuss that later but let me read through those letters now ka nya ch nya tha na tha na pa ma ya ra la va ra la ra na so 18 consonants of the tamil once again we will learn them in detail in the third lesson now i want to discuss certain rules and of course exceptions for any natural languages there will be as many exceptions 
as there are rules. So don't be again baffled by them, but some important rules so that when you learn the letters, there is, you can avoid some basic confusions. Now, uh, Tamil grammar has a wonderful structure. So I like to think of that as being tongue friendly. So the language is kept a tongue friendly language. The idea is to not to bombard us with the rules and restrictions, but to keep the language tongue friendly. Any word, any sentence in Tamil will not be a tongue twister. The letters, the sound sequence will be so tongue friendly, the, the flow, the movement of the tongue will be so natural. So in that sense, people have made these restrictions. Now in Tamil, all consonants are not allowed in all positions. When I say position, I mean the beginning of the word, the middle of the word and the end of the word. We call them as initial, medial and the final positions. So only certain consonants are allowed in the initial positions, only certain are allowed in the final positions. Of course, all consonants can come in the medial position, but only in a certain cluster, certain combination of vowels and consonants. So we'll mention some of the important rules here. So as you can see in the slide, so the six consonants, ka, cha, tha, na, pa, ma, they can come in the initial position with all the 12 vowels. When I say that, uh, we have to talk about the weir mei, the vowel consonant uh, combination. But let me give you one example here quickly. So you say you take ka, the ka consonant. Now that can be added with the 12 vowels. So a, a, e, e, u, u, a, a, i, o, o, out, the 12 vowels. So if I add ka with all of them, I will get these 12 weir mei, the vowel consonant combinations. Ka, ka, ki, ki, ku, ku, ke, ke, kai. So that is the 12 uh, vowel added forms of the ka consonant. So ka cha ta na pa ma, they can come with all the 12 vowels in the initial position of a word. Whereas via, iv, ir, eng, eng, they can come with only certain vowel combinations. I, I will not explain that here. Don't worry, we will learn that later. And uh, similarly, in the final position, all the blue color letters can come. Uh, the red color letters I marked because the words in which they are coming in the final position, those words are obsolete now. So you don't have to bother about them. So as far as you are concerned, these three letters do not appear in the final position of a word. You can take that way. And uh, middle position, only certain combinations. We'll talk about that a bit later. Now, when we refer to a particular letter, the letter itself, we add certain suffixes to them. So we, we call, typically we use the karam, karam. So when you say ka, we want to say ka, we want to refer to the ka sound itself. Rather than saying ka or trying to say ik, something like that, you can say kagaram, ka and add karam. So kagaram, ma, magaram. And when it is a long form, ka, so you can say kaharam, maharam, like that. So agaram, aharam, igaram, iharam, like that. So it's a very useful way of referring to the letters themselves. And uh, in spoken form, people also use an ana, avanna suffix. So you say ana, avanna, kana, kavanna, kina, kiyanna, like that you can say. So that's one way of referring to the letters themselves. I might be using this, this form in the lessons. And uh, the example words I have chosen when I teach these letters, uh, they reflect this initial medial things. So the examples I have chosen cover uh, letters uh, appearing in the initial position, the medial position, in certain combinations and in the final position. So you can take a note of them. I'm not going to explain that there. So certain important points I'll explain, but not all of them. So if you are interested, you can compare these rules with the examples I have given and uh, sort of figure it out yourself. But later we will discuss them in detail in a separate lesson. Now, regarding the hard consonants, this is one thing that's very much questioned, debated, because Except the Tamil, in almost all Indian languages, there is a bunch of hard consonants. So they, they are, there's a family of hard consonants. You take ka, then there is ka, ka, ga, ga. So four variants in all of them. So voiced, aspirated, not voiced, aspirated like that. So they're called alpa prana, maha prana uh, variations. Uh, in Tamil, there's only ka, cha. So not cha, cha, ja, ja, cha, cha, ta, 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 No, there's only ka. Now, this is not a a problem or a defect deficiency in Tamil. This is actually quite natural and uh, Tamil has the variations. Tamil has these uh, voiced aspirated variations but they appear as allophones, not as uh, explicit letters and uh, they are guided by the position of the letter. So for the hard consonants, uh, out of the six hard consonants, ka, cha, ta, ta, pa, ra, the ta and the last ra, 
they don't appear as initial letters so the other four ka cha ta pa when they appear in the initial position or when all the six are doubled so they appear after themselves then they appear in their natural voiced not aspirated mode or tone you can say or uh, the allophone so k as it is k when the initial k or doubled akka ikka k so it's called k voiced not aspirated so kappal akka like the ch chattai tachan ch like that but when they are paired with their nasal counterpart as i already mentioned uh, all the six hot consonants has a counterpart nasalized counterpart kh ny ch ny th n th n p m r n so when they appear after their nasal counterparts they will be voiced they will be become soft they they also be nasalized so kh but when it appears after the ing becomes ing gh so thangam like that and uh, when they are appearing before vowels sometimes they are also aspirated aha so the k becomes ha aha like that uh, be, be, between two vowels they are aspirated but uh, uh, this position some people they will keep it as it is so some people may say akha or akham some people may say gha agham or some people may say aham but uh, the important point is because they are allophones they don't uh, impact the meaning of the word whether you say akham aham aham in tamil the meaning is not affected similarly uh, as for us as long as we are using pure tamil words there will not be any confusion between these allophones but uh, they have very well defined the positions but uh, when it comes to loan words sanskrit loan words or english loan words then there might be small variations affecting the meaning of the word for example whether you are saying pan or bhan uh, in both cases p b p b Uh, we use the same pa in tamil when you say gan or khan so same in tamil so that might affect the meaning but that's the problem with loan words and uh, typically based on exposure people will know what we are talking about so when a native says ganesha or kanesha they don't confuse there is no confusion absolutely here based on exposure experience we know the context we know the meaning of the word or if you are writing and uh, if we think uh, the meaning confusion should be avoided ambiguity should be avoided we typically put the words in parentheses in the english script or sanskrit script or we put footnotes so we can easily avoid uh, confusions and uh, when we write uh, sanskrit in tamil people use numbers so there is a grandham uh, explicit sc- a script developed based on tamil for sanskrit but uh, people are not very much using that not in popular use now but uh, we use tamil script with the numbers so you can say ka as it is and you can put two three four variations to show ka ka ga ga like that so that's used typically to write slogans in tamil sanskrit slogans in tamil anyway so there there are exceptions so point is tamil hard consonants have allophones uh, within tamil system uh, they are all well defined and uh, there is absolutely no confusion when it comes to loan words based on experience and context we can understand them again most of the time 95% of the time we avoid confusions five percentage we can add foot notes or something like that. the hot consonants all six of them they do not appear in the final positions because hot consonants are basically stops so your throat uh, sticks together to make them k try that k so your, your vocal tract has to stick together to make that sound so you cannot stay in that uh, in that position they naturally have to release and that will create a vowel sound so tamil grammarians have identified this nuance very minor detail and uh, they have put that as a short u sound so u is basically a, a vowel so it's a short vowel so it should have one mathirai one time unit but uh, when it uh, the end of the word when there should be a hard consonant but as it is they cannot appear we have a explicit u sound there but that u sound is shortened so it's sort of like it's there or not there it's like a shortened cat we call that as kutriya lugaram kutriya lugaram means a shortened u so that u sound is only for half a mathirai half a time unit so for example uh, in english we say watch ch, which is on watch so you can stop there right? you, you eventually say a, a sound a sound right that's the kutri lugaram in tamil so we say in tamil we say watch but we write watch but we don't say again watch we say watch but see the u sound is there so that is kutri lugaram in tamil but uh, it has a lot of uh, impact in the tamil grammar so we have to learn that but we learn that uh, later i don't want to bombard you with lot of information here so let me quickly give you a summary of this so tamil letters are basically 12 vowels uyir eluthu and 18 consonants mei eluthu 
and uyirelthu are classified into kuril and nedil short long counterparts and meyelthu are classified as hard soft and in between vallinam mellinam and uh, idayinam and there are combinations of vowels and consonants called as uyir uh, mei we'll learn them later and there's one special consonant or vowel called aidam so we will learn these letters in our uh, next lesson so next lesson we'll learn about vowels and uh, go on from there so thank you very much stay in touch and uh, practice lessons learn from these lessons and please do go in order see you with the next lesson thank you nandri